You guys are all absolutely crazy, man. Yesterday, we got over 100 subscribers in 24 hours for a channel of my size. That is absolutely mental. I've no clue where it came from or how it happened, but it did. And thank you all so much for making that happen for me. It is genuinely mind-blowing to me. Like, no joke, I don't get it but I'm happy about it. If you're not a part of this little family that we have going on yet, make sure to hit that red button and the bell button so you never miss a future video. Drop me a like if you enjoy it. And at the end of this video, drop me a comment with your thoughts. I'm always interested. I always reply to every single comment. And two days ago, I uploaded this video speaking about 10 stocks that I'm going to be watching this week. And it did absolutely incredible. So I thought, well, why not give the people what they want? Why not give them 10 more stocks that I'm going to be watching this week? Some of these are stocks that I'm already in. Some are stocks that I want to buy for the very first time. And some are stocks that I'm just going to be watching because the price action that's happened to them the last week or so has been crazy. So we have a nice mixture of different stocks in there for all you different investors. Some really safe long-term ones. Some, you know, high-risk, high-reward players. You know how we like to do it on the channel. We mix it up a little bit. But seriously, guys, I can't thank you all enough for the support lately. I know I say this at the start of every video lately, but it's just because you guys keep outdoing yourselves. It's getting better and better every day, and it is genuinely mental. You're here today to find 10 stocks that I'm going to be watching this week, so let's get straight into it with stock number one. We're kicking things off with the stocks that everybody's speaking about right now, all of the oil-related stocks that I'm going to be watching this week. And the first one is actually Nordic American Tankers LTD. I actually made a full video on these guys yesterday, so if you want more info on these guys, that will be in the description, of course. But why they're on my watch list. If you watched yesterday's video, you know that last week these guys absolutely skyrocketed up 45%. Mainly for two reasons. One, Jeremy from Financial Education made a video on them and that caused this massive spike. And then the CEO was on CNBC with Jim Cramer and he is a character and a half and people are going to like him and they're making a lot of money. These guys are oil tankers. The oil producers are paying these guys a lot of money to store oil in their tankers right now. They're paying them about 70000 a day and the operating cost is 8,000 a day, so per tanker, they're currently bringing in 62,000 profit a day, and they have 23 of these tankers. And considering the times we're in, they have a really good balance sheet. Look, current assets 129 million, current liabilities 59 million. They're in a fantastic position, and this year will more than likely be their most profitable year ever, just because the demand for oil storage is so high. But they've already gone up 45%, in my opinion. A lot of what is to come is already priced in. I do fully expect these guys to go up in value for the next at least three months, potentially six to nine months but I don't see very much long-term value from these guys. I personally don't plan on buying them but if the opportunity presents itself I will do. If we just have a look at the five-year chart anybody can tell it's horrific you know what I mean it really is absolutely terrible. For the last couple of years they've been trading between the high ones and low twos so very cheap share. Obviously it has rocketed up in price to nearly six dollars. It will more than likely hit six dollars as soon as market opens and the short term value is insane especially if I had have looked into these guys one week earlier I most definitely would have bought them but now I feel like the opportunity for the absolutely massive gains has passed. Their dividend more than likely is actually safe though. I don't know why it has such a low score. It's more than likely because of how messy it looks but the CEO himself has said that they're going to be you know paying that dividend and more than likely increasing it at a very fast rate so if I did find some reason to believe in these guys and their growth in the very long term I would most definitely want to pick them up but I'm not there quite yet but they are on the watch list I will be keeping an eye on them next up Chevron absolutely massive massive company dividend safety of 65 a dividend yield of almost six percent and recently they came out and said that their focus is on protecting the dividend which is really nice for us to see and it's clear to see why they have a 32 plus year dividend streak. This is one of those companies that I, as a long term dividend investor, really want to buy and hold for decades and decades. As a very good uninterrupted dividend streak, they're an absolutely massive company and they have that nearly 6% dividend. It's beautiful. Early last week, we saw an initial rise, then we saw a steep decline, and then it was a nice little gradual slope up. Overall, finishing last week down 0.22%. A very, very stagnant week all in all. And overall, in the three month chart, we can still see that they're down just over 22% from their highs. These highs were actually their highs. You know, they weren't just a short term. They are uptrending massively. They're very cyclical. Oil stocks generally are. But in general, we see the price going up and up. So right now, if I can get in at a nice little tasty discount, of course, I'm going to do so. I do expect these guys, you know, to be cyclical going forward, but that's fine. From a long-term point of view, it doesn't matter as long as the overall trend is going upwards. And again, I want to hold these guys for decades, so I don't really care if it goes up and down year after year, as long as in general, they make me money and pay me, most importantly, that really nice 6% dividend that will more than likely only go up in price. The third and last oil-related stock we're going to be looking at today is 3M. You all know about these guys, a dividend king, 75 dividend safety, a 4% yield, and 
a 61 year dividend streak. It does not get much better than that from a long term investor's point of view. And what makes, like, just the cherry on the cake, yeah? Their dividend growth the last five years has been fast. The last 20 years, 9% fast. So they're still growing this dividend, and it's already at 4%, which for a company who's been paying it for over 60 years is incredible. Fairly similar to Chevron, in the three month chart they're down 17.5%, so still offering somewhat of a discount if that's the way you like to look at it. And what I like about these guys, their balance sheet, current assets nearly 13 billion, and then their current liabilities 9.2 billion. So that's obviously a nice position to be in considering that earnings are going to inevitably be down for the next while, and total assets are at 44.6 billion, and total liabilities 34.5 billion. So a lovely balance sheet, a 60 plus year dividend growth streak, a 4% dividend yield, it looks awesome, you know what I mean? For a long-term investor, they're ticking all of the boxes. What has to be noted, and what worries a lot of people, is how they've performed the last couple of years in particular. We can see here at the peak of 2018, they made their high, and it has been downhill for pretty much two years. Now, right before all of this started to happen, there was this minor recovery, but that means nothing realistically. The fact of the matter is, their price has been moving down for a couple of years, but to us, that could be a good thing. We could be getting in an awful lot cheaper because the way I look at it, their fundamentals haven't changed. Their place in the industry hasn't changed. They're still an absolutely fantastic, a very, very strong company. I think we're getting in at a very good price. And again, this is one of those companies that I plan on just buying and holding and buying and holding forever, essentially. You know, it's one of my long-term dividend stocks. Now though, let's step away from the oil-related stocks. This next one, right, is very speculative and it's one that I am not touching, but I do want them on my watch list because they're interesting me, okay? AYTU Bioscience. Look at this pre-market of 27.14%. You can probably guess why due to the fact that they're in bioscience. So these guys are testing UV light treatment, you know, obviously on people who have contracted the virus that's going around right now. Anytime anybody comes out and is trying anything different that could potentially cure the virus, their stock goes crazy. But just as soon as it goes up, it can go crashing back down. That's why I would never touch off these guys, but I always do like keeping an eye on them. And these have actually been on my watch list for quite a while. Just look at the chart, you know. Boom, overnight gone up, what's that? 600% and then boom, 50% of it's gone. Back up another 100%, 50% of it's gone. And then we're going up 27%. It's extremely, extremely cyclical. I'm not touching off it, but I did want to mention it in today's video because I know some of you guys are absolutely crazy. But please guys, remember a company like this, their stock price is going to change off of complete and utter speculation. Just as quick as it can go up, it can go back down. This makes Carnival look like the safest bet in the entire universe. That's how much I don't like this. And I suppose what would make sense is to go from the riskiest into what could potentially be the safest. So let's get on to stock number five. So next up is Procter & Gamble. The last video we spoke about Johnson & Johnson, this video is Procter & Gamble. They're like two peas in a pot, you know what I mean? Dividend safety, 99. Dividend yield, 2.66%. Dividend streak, 62 plus years. Absolutely beautiful. PE ratio at 23.5, which is above its five year average at 21.5. So it may be ever so slightly overpriced. That's why it's on the watch list. Uh, this is another one of those companies that I want to buy and hold and keep buying forever. So I'll keep an eye on them. And if I want to buy a little bit more, I'll buy a little bit more. I don't think these guys need much of an introduction if you're in the stock market whatsoever. If you've watched more than three videos ever on the stock market, you know who they are, but I sell things like Tide Pods, Ariel, Lady Things, Pampers, Bounty, Men Things, etc, etc. A quick look at the balance sheet, current asset 27.1 billion, current liabilities 32. nearly 9 billion, so obviously not the best in the world, but total assets 180.5 billion, and total liabilities 72.6 billion. So, from a long term perspective, beautiful balance sheet. And what's good about these guys is they are a consumer staple, the things that they sell, people need. So obviously, in an economic time like we're going through right now, these guys are going to perform better than an awful lot of other people. And that's quite clear to see when we have a look at their three month chart and we see that they're only down 5.15%. Very, very close to where, you know, they left off. Not much else needs to be said about these guys. They're deemed to be one of the safest stocks that you can ever invest in. It is Procter & Gamble. They're one of the biggest of the best. So the last video I spoke about Pepsi, I felt a little bit bad that I didn't include Coca-Cola. So in today's video, we'll get them into the mix, okay? A dividend safety of 80, and a dividend yield of 3.61%. Pair that with a 58 plus year uninterrupted dividend streak, and that's a very tasty start. I've spoken about these guys a lot. I have a video comparing them to Pepsi. I own both companies and I do believe in both, but honestly, I prefer Pepsi just a little bit. The main reason being is essentially Coca-Cola only sells drinks, whereas Pepsi also sells snacks. It is literally that simple. They're both at the very top of the game. Coca-Cola arguably is the very tip top of the game, I still prefer Pepsi. With that being said, I like to diversify. Even if the diversification is buying 
the two people at the top of the game, Coke and Pepsi, I like doing so. And Coke is a company that I want to buy and hold forever. It's another one of these really safe bets. And what is somewhat attractive about Coca-Cola is that they're still down just over 20% on the three month chart. So we may be able to get in at what we like to call that discount. Compare that to Pepsi, who is only down 5.98%. Coca-Cola is taking a whole lot longer, you know, to get back to where they were. So that's why they are still on the watch list and I probably will buy more Coke before I buy more Pepsi. Next up, a company I honestly haven't done very much research into, I'm always honest about that on the channel, a company that's very easy to understand however, National Beverage Corp, okay? They develop, produce, market and sell a portfolio of waters, juices, energy drinks and carbonated soft drinks primarily in the US and Canada. As far as I understand this one here, La Croix, I think that's what you call it? La Croix? I believe that is like their biggest product. If we just have a look at a three month chart, this is what really caught my eye initially. We're up 12.31%, you know what I mean? They're not down whatsoever, despite everything that's happening in the world. And that's down to the fact that they're a consumer staple stock and they're selling products that people are going to buy, regardless of the economic situation. You're not going to worry too much about the dollar you're going to spend on a bottle of water. With that in mind though, have a look at the five year chart guys. Look how high they were, nearly up to $125 a share. Now they're down at $51 a share. The recovery is looking very promising, given the fact that the recovery is happening in such a tough time maybe this is a great investment. And these guys, without a doubt, have an absolutely fantastic balance sheet. Look at this, current assets, 407 million. Current liabilities, 109 million. Total liabilities, 167. Total assets, 589 million. So it's an absolutely beautiful balance sheet. So these are definitely a company that I want to get into very soon. These guys are in direct competition with both Pepsi and Coca-Cola, however, and I have not done very much research, so that's why I won't just jump into them and open a position, but they're on the watch list and I will look into them a little bit further. They don't pay a dividend though, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Next up, I got Verizon Communications, okay? 87 dividend safety, 4.25% yield, and a 29 plus year dividend growth streak. So very nice. Now, it has been very slow growth, albeit, but they're already at a 4.25% yield, so it's a very nice yield. And right now, they're PE ratio is 11.9, which is more or less the same as its five-year average of 12.1, so it may well be fairly priced. And they have performed very well. They're only down 3.9% from the three-month high. Excellent. I'm in both these guys and AT&T. I got into them both at the very same time, and Verizon has done an awful lot better for me than AT&T has. They're in the green, AT&T is in the red. And just having a look back through the max stock chart, it has, in general, been very nice upward growth. Obviously, there was this terrible stage here, but since then, if we look at recent history, the last 10 years, even pretty much the last 20 years, it has been nice, consistent growth. And this is one of the things I like about Verizon. They're just quite consistent. There's not many crazy jumps, not many crazy dips. They pay a nice dividend. They're reliable. And having a look at the balance sheet, we have 40.7 billion in current assets. We have 41 billion in current liability. So, you know, that's fine. More or less even the self out. 294 billion in total assets, okay? And only 232 billion in total liability. So, decent balance sheet. Definitely decent. You know, these are one of the guys who's not going to be hit particularly hard by the economic situation, you know? They counted 118 million devices connected to its extensive wireless network. Those people are going to keep paying their bills and keep their devices connected, you know what I mean? Especially since you're stuck inside, that's one of the things you need right now is your internet. Next up, we have Realty Income Corp. The only OREIT I'll be speaking about on today's list, and they're a retail OREIT. They have a dividend safety of 86, a lovely dividend yield of 5.6%, and an uninterrupted dividend streak of 25 plus years. So, you know, very nice off the bat. They own more than 6,400 properties across America that are leased to about 300 commercial tenants in 50 different industries. These companies include Walgreens, 7-Eleven, FedEx, Walmart, Sainsbury's, loads and loads of different people. Obviously, these guys could be on somewhat shaky grounds right now because, you know, if these people can't pay their bills to Realty Income Corp, they're not bringing in as much money. They could potentially lose tenants in the short term and have to find new ones. That is the risk that's associated with these guys right now. But in the long term, I absolutely love these guys. Anytime you see a 5.6% dividend yield in a company that you believe in, that's, that's a match made in heaven. And on the three month chart, we are still down quite a bit. We're down 35.27%. And look at their growth and valuation. Their earnings growth last year's up, this year's up, next five years up, revenue growth's up. It's all up, it's all looking good. So if I can get into a company that I believe in is clearly performing well and is down 35%, Beautiful. And the balance sheet is a little bit different for these guys because they're in OREIT, but we can see total assets of 18 and a half billion, total liabilities of 8.7 billion. So lovely, lovely balance sheet. They'll be able to get through some tough times as needed. I see the long-term potential here being absolutely immense. Not only do they pay a beautiful dividend, but I also see the stock price growing. It's awesome. And if we have a look at the max stock chart, it has been really nice, really steady growth. You know what I mean? There's not too many down periods whatsoever. It's forever going up. And then boom, we get this massive sell-off. So I am very, 
very happy and very optimistic about these guys. If you have any other OREITs that you're currently invested in, please leave them in the comments. I am looking to get into a few more. I'm just not sure where I want to get into right now, given these times. So let me know what ones you're in in the comments. JP Morgan Chase. So I spoke about these guys a few videos ago. I don't exactly remember when. And I just said that I'm looking into them a little bit more. I'm in Wells Fargo right now. They were one of the first stocks I ever bought. I'm not particularly happy with the position I opened, but that's all part of it. That's all part of the learning curve. Having a look at JP Morgan, however, I'm more confident in these guys. So dividend safety of 60. Dividend yield of essentially 4% and an uninterrupted dividend streak of 10 years. So that dividend's definitely not the safest in the whole wild world, but it's not, you know, it's not at complete and utter risk. And we can see that they have came out and said that they hope to maintain the dividend. So hope being the keyword, they may well have to cut it. We'll have to wait and see. But what can be taken away from this is look, it's back to a 4% dividend yield. And they've only been paying it for 10 years. So they grew it very, very quickly to that 4%. These guys are currently down pretty much 32% from their three month highs, which is, you know, somewhat average for a lot of different companies right now. However, their PE ratio is 13.6, which is above its five year average of 11.5. So they may still, despite being down 30%, be ever so slightly overvalued. Again, just looking at the max stock chart though, the last 10 years in particular, we have seen absolutely immense growth. And now we have seen this big dip and it still may well be undervalued. And I can understand why it's because it has grown just so quickly, so aggressively. Do I think that $90 is a good price? I genuinely do. I do still believe that's a good price, but I would in no way be surprised if it was to drop a little bit lower. I'm still not 100% decided on when I'm going to buy these or if there's a particular price I'm looking for, but they are on the watch list and they're one that I most definitely do want to get into. I mean, if we just take Wells Fargo, for example, it's a little bit of a messier chart. Let's all be honest. That's why I'm taking JPM a little bit more seriously than I'm taking Wells Fargo right now. I already have a position in these guys. I'm not the happiest man in the world about it. I do, however, still believe in these guys ultimately in the long term. Now, guys, you are fully equipped between this video and the last one with 20 stocks to look at and monitor this week. Some of them stocks that I will almost definitely buy. The consumer staples, the safe ones that I want to buy little bits and pieces of every single week, pretty much forever. Some of them, the higher risk ones that I will only buy if I deem fit. Carnival, for example, I really want to open a position in Carnival, but I'm just waiting for the right opportunity. I would never rush into a company like that. Even have Delta in there from the last video. That's the company I want to buy more than likely the most next week. But please remember to always do your own research. Never buy something just because I do. I'm a random kid on the internet. I'm not a financial advisor. And again, I just have to say it. Thank you all so much for all of the support lately. I know I keep saying it every single video, but I genuinely am just so appreciative. Like, the numbers that we're doing are absolutely crazy to me. If you're one of those guys who watches till the end, thank you all so much. Please make sure to like this video. Drop me a comment. I love speaking with you guys. And I'm sure you're already subscribed if you got to the end of the video. Hope you all have an absolutely great day. And as always, I will be catching you tomorrow for another video every single day, baby. Until the next one, peace.